Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a numeric variable into a character variable. Why might it be necessary to do this? One common reason is to concatenate two or more data sets that have different data types. This happens a lot when you import multiple data sets from Excel. Another reason to convert numeric to character is to add leading zeros for numeric values that aren't used in calculations, such as an ID number. In example one, we assign the value 5000.02 to the variable num. Because we don't include quotes around our value, our value will be created in numeric type. One simple way to convert this value to character is by using a character function on it, such as a concatenation function, like cat. Normally, we would use the cat function to combine multiple text values. But if we include only one numeric variable, it will convert it to character. Here we save our new value to the character variable carcat. I use the length statement to set the character length. Otherwise, it will default to 200 characters. Next, we see the textbook way to convert numeric to character using the put function. The put function requires two arguments. First is the name of the numeric variable we want to convert to character. That's num. Second is the format we want to apply to our new value. Here we convert our number using the 7.2 format. The 7 tells SAS the width of the text variable. We have seven characters, including the decimal. The 2 tells SAS the number of decimal places we want. But most of the time when we convert numeric to character, we're converting numbers of various sizes. To play it safe, we should make our text value large enough to accommodate the largest value. In the next line, I made the width of card 10 2 equal to 10. If we exclude the decimal value, as we do in the next line, our new variable will be assigned the integer of our number. In other words, our number without the decimal value. We can also convert our number in dollar format. Likewise, we can convert in comma format. This will output our value with a comma in the thousands position. So let's go ahead and run this code. We see that num is of numeric type. The rest are all character. The length of car 7-2 is seven characters. The car 10 variables and the dollar and comma variables are of length 10, meaning they have 10 characters. If we look at our variables, we see that car cat which we converted using the cat function, appears in the format we expected, like our numeric value. Car72 and Car102 appear the same, even though the lengths of these variables are different. For Car10, we didn't include the decimal values, so it appears as an integer. And we see that our value in dollar format appears with a dollar sign and a comma. And our value in comma format appears with a comma in the thousands place. I frequently convert dates to character for fuzzy matching functions. This allows me to check for common data entry errors, such as entering 10 for the day rather than 0, 1. In example 2, I created a new variable named date that holds a numeric value for February 1st, 2021. I use the put function on date using the mmddyy10 format to make sure it's saved to my new variable date car in the format I want. I also created another variable, month, that just holds the month value for date. You can see that I used the month function on date to extract just the month number. Then I applied the put function with the format two dot. So let's run this code. So we didn't apply a format to date, so it appears in its unformatted value the number of days since January 1st, 1960. Date car appears in the format I was expecting, MMDDYY, with 10 characters, if you count the forward slashes. And we see that the month holds the value for February, the second month of the year. If we look at our column properties, we see that month is a character variable with two characters. But we see that our number doesn't appear in two character format as we specified. That's because the first number was a zero, and in order for our variable to display leading zeros, we need to add a Z to our format. So let's do that now. And let's run it again. Now we see that our month 
appears as two digits. Another reason to convert a numeric value to character is to combine multiple data sets that include variables of the same name, but a different data type. This happens a lot when you import data sets from Excel. In example three, we want to combine data set one and data set two. But when we run the code and look in the log, we see an error. Variable person ID has been defined as both character and numeric. So let's take a look at these data sets. These data sets include fictional study data. We're going to focus on the person ID column. This variable includes IDs for the study subjects and are unique for each data set. In data set two, we see that one of the person IDs is only four digits. That's because it included two leading zeros that we removed at import. So this is person ID 5984. And if we look for this participant, we also see him or her in observation number nine, 005984, including the two leading zeros because this one is in character format. So if we want to combine these data sets, we need to either convert one of these variables to numeric or one to character. So let's convert person ID in data set two to character. Let's create a new data set named data set two mod and we'll set data set two. Now we can't just convert a variable from one type to another. So let's create a temporary variable named person ID underscore temp and use our put statement on person ID. And let's use the Z6 format so that we can add back those missing leading zeros. But if we stopped here, our variable names wouldn't line up because they're named differently. To line them up, we use the rename statement on our output data set. Rename equals open close paren. Let's borrow person ID temp from here. Copy it in here, set it equal to person ID. We also need to drop person ID. Otherwise, when we rename our temporary variable, we would get an error because we already have a person ID variable. Lastly, we need to replace data set two with data set two mod in the set statement. So let's run this code. First off, we see that our log is clean and our data sets have been combined correctly. Lastly, I wanted to show you how to join two different data sets in SQL when the variables you're joining on are different data types. Here we use the select clause to output person ID and the outcome for each data set. The inner join tells SAS to output only person IDs that were present in both data sets. Now remember, person ID is numeric in data set one and character in data set two. When we run this code, we get an error in the log. The expression with equals has different data types. In order to fix this, we can use the put function on person ID from data set two. This converts it to character just for this comparison. And if we run this code, we see it matched on two person IDs, but it should have matched on three. Remember there is one person ID in data set two that only had four characters, matching the same one with six characters in data set one. To add these leading zeros, we need to include a Z in our format. Now, when we run this code, we see it matches on all three person IDs, including 5984. And that's it for this video. Hopefully it's given you some tools to convert numeric values to character and provide some real world examples to show you when it's needed. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.